Hi guys, so this is the first video where I'm actually going to do a bit of setting up of the Eagle Tree Vector flight controller and OSD. Um, now the way I'm doing this is basically doing a bit of a tutorial showing you how it's all done, but something that should be noted is whilst I'm doing this tutorial, this is all kind of a first off for me anyway. So it's not as if I've put it together, I've tried it, I've flown it, I can give a review. So rather than doing a review of it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of do a, a blow by blow of what the first user can experience, um, how to get it to a condition where you're sort of ready for flight uh, obviously then I'm going to do a first flight hopefully a maiden um, and I'm going to be doing that with a fixed wing aircraft to begin with my Skywalker 1800 and then I'm going to be doing it on a multi-rotor either a quadcopter possibly a tricopter maybe even both um, but yeah, so what I'm going to do in this particular video is just do the initial setup get it to a point where your receiver and your transmitter are working go through a couple of the steps there and we'll look at some of the fail safe options as well. Um, in following videos which will come very soon we'll look at some of the other screens um, and we'll take a look ultimately at the OSD and the setup of that because there's plenty of options on there and getting it all configured for my first flight. Okay so let's delve in with the first part of getting your Eagle Tree Vector set up and that is to set your transmitter up, make sure it's working with your RX. Um, now this particular tutorial what I'm going to be doing is setting up um, a Futaba setup with SBUS so that means you're only going to need one cable going into your receiver. Now prerequisites of that are you're going to need to get some power to power up your RX. Um, probably best at this point what I'll do is I'll show you a picture of how my setup for this rig is working right now and as you can see if you follow all around it the various labels are in place basically the the key to it is that rather than using an ESC for this particular setup, I'm using a 5 volt BEC, um, but when it comes to flight, you could use the, uh, the built in BEC of an ESC anyway. So uh, that's what I'm using, but you can see that the BEC is running into the vector onto the output rail that provides power, and that is actually sending power to the receiver via the S bus. So, okay, doke. So, first and foremost, what we need to do then is power up the vector. So, plug in the LiPo and you should see your receiver light up and of course we want to have our transmitter turned on before we do that okay so that should be fine and your receiver should be connected and then you start up your software and as you can see at the moment it's waiting for me to connect it and then we just plug in the USB to it now and lo and behold we are faced with the initial screen now I should say at this point I have updated the firmware to the most recent firmware which at the time we're going to press is 11.48 uh, if you do need to do it just plug the USB in press firmware update follow the guide that will uh, that will help you get that set up so first and foremost let's see whether or not the vector is actually doing what it should do and if we pick it up this is picking up the module itself you can see that it is moving around so I can ure it around a little bit anyway there's communication there now the first thing that we've got to decide is what airframe we're going to do um, to do that on this overview screen we're going to click on choose airframe and then you've just got to make your decision now for the purposes of this tutorial I'm going to be setting it up for my Skywalker 1800 fixed wing so I'm just going to go for a good old-fashioned traditional fixed wing setup click apply now you're going to get a warning at this point saying that once you've chosen an airframe um, via the software you have to confirm through the OSD before you can actually set it all flying so uh, just be aware that once we've done all of this you're going to need to go through the menu system via the OSD for, via your, um, your FPV rig to confirm it otherwise it will not save that setting so uh, just be aware of that and I'll show you how that's all done in a later video so we click on OK so we've done that let's go back to the overview now you'll see if I grab my transmitter and move stuff around that nothing's happening so the first thing after that that we've got to do is we've got to set up the transmitter to actually communicate with the device so to do that the first thing that you want to do is just do a little bit of work over here on the transmitter itself um, basically the standard channels one two three four that's pretty much normal so one is going to be aileron two is going to be elevator three is going to be throttle four is going to be rudder what you then got to decide is a switch for your mode switch um, i suggest a three pole switch for that now i've already pre-programmed this audience so i'm just going to go into the link menu 
down to function. Obviously, this all depends on the type of uh, transmitter we're using. But we can see on this menu here um, that 1, 2, 3, 4 are set up as normal, just as I've said there. Now, I've then got channel 5, which is known as a gear on uh, the Futaba, is SC, which is this 3 pulse switch here. So this is going to be my mode switch. I'm then going to want to have a gain knob. Um, so I can tweak the sensitivity and the amount of kind of um, compensation that the uh, gyros will give me. Um, I'm going to do that through this LD gain knob. So I've set channel 6 to LD. Channel 7 I'm going to have as my secondary mode switch. So that allows me to have one mode on this switch, which when I flick it down gives me three more positions to use. Quite handy. Um, and finally, even though I don't actually have flaps installed on the Skywalker, I am going to just program channel 8 to be my flap switch, and that is going to be over here on the SB switch, which on this particular model is a three pole. Um, I can also decide in the future if I want to do it on a potentiometer. Either way, like I say, no, no, uh, there's no flaps on my model at the moment, so I'm just going to set it up like this. So, going back to the software, the easiest and best way of doing this is to simply click on the Run RX Analysis wizard. So we click on that. Then you're going to get a little warning. It tells you what it's going to do. Please configure your transmitter and connect to RX before continuing. Now it's well worth setting up your transmitter like I have here. Program all your channels in. Choose what switches you're going to do before you do this. I did try and actually go through the process of um, of changing it mid installation and it doesn't like it. It doesn't see the channels in the way that it should do and you'll see as we go through the reasons for that. So anyway, so we're going to click next. Obviously make sure your props aren't on so you're not going to chop your hands off. Okay, so then you choose your desired language which is for units. So I'm going to go for English because I like to have feet and then choose your type of, trans of receiver. So I am going to be going with SBUS Okay, uh, if I had a second aileron channel or second elevator or a second rudder, I could choose it there because I'm using Skywalker. I'm using a standard aileron with a Y connector, so none for me. Okay, now it wants to know how to detect return to home. Uh, this is for fail safe mode. So, what I want to do is rather than say I want to flick it by a switch, I'm going to have it on S bus. That is to say that if my transmitter loses connection, this is going to program it to know what that looks like and flick it into return to home. So that should come back to me and hover over my head, being that I'm using a fixed wing. Obviously, if you're using a multi rotor, this will change slightly in the setup of it, um, and you've got things like loiter mode and things like that. Anyway, we'll do with that. Okay, so make sure your transmitter is turned on bound to your RX. Yes, it is. And then we need to run the wizard itself. Now, one quick note here number of channels detected in pulse train 14. Now, that is to say that it's detected through my RX that I have a 14 channel S bus transmitter, the 14 SG, um, which is fine. If you see zero there, you know something's not right. It's not detecting any channels. Um, be very careful with powering up your RX. You do need to make sure that you've got that 5 volts from an ESC or a BEC. It will not see it from just plugging in the USB channel, so don't fall for that one. If you see zero there, go over your setup again and, uh, and take a look. Anyway, I'm going to click next on that. Right, so now we have got to move my mode switch to a different position and leave it there. So my mode switch, as I said before, is going to be SC. So what I'm going to do, flick it down, click next. As you can see, the mode is now channel 5. So it's detected a change on channel 5, which my switch was set to, and it's agreed. OK, channel 5 is mode. Move your throttle all the way up. And click next. Move it all the way down, and click next. Boom, it's recognized throttle is on channel 3. Aileron stick all the way to the left. Next, and it said channel 1. Elevator stick all the way back. Channel 2. Rudder stick all the way to the left. Channel 4. Sub mode switch. So this is going to be my secondary mode switch. So one change on there. Boom, it's recognized channel 7. Gain knob. Make a little adjustment on that. And it says channel 6. And flaps one down on flaps. Channel 8, fantastic. So as we can see here, it should be showing all the channels. All the channels are mapped. We can go to next. OK, now it's going to learn the stick throw. So this is calibrating it. Um, and it's also going to do the fail safe. So turn your transmitter off now. So we turn the transmitter off and click next. 
turn it back on again, wait for it to bind, green light, and go. So now that's told it what to look for if the transmitter disappears. Um, and now we can do the actual throws, so all the way to the left and hold it. Elevator all the way back. Rudder all the way to the left. Center the sticks and set your throttle to a typical cruising position. Now I'm going to say about sort of 40 ish percent. And then climbing, I'm going to go up to about 80 percent. Be very careful to make sure that your throttle doesn't need reversing. It may need reversing, and you may find that when you put it up, it goes down and down, it goes up. So be careful of that. And we click next, and all the way off. Next. Wizard is complete. Click on finish. And lo and behold, RX analysis is OK. And if we move the sticks around, left and right, up and down, forward and backwards, rudder, you can see that it is all in place. OK, so that's the initial setup all done. We're now in a position where the RX and the transmitter are all set up. You're also in a place where if you've got a screen, you can actually connect all of your OSD connections like I did in the um, in the picture that you're looking at right now. Um, and you're actually able to test the on-screen menus. Um, as I noticed at the start of the video, when you select an airframe, you are going to be asked to say OK when you get to that. Now, stay tuned. I will be doing some videos on actually looking at the stick control through the OSD. SD menu um, but what I'm going to be looking at on the next video is the second part of the initial setup which is going to be configuring your switches and your sub mode switches uh, talking a little bit about what they do and basically setting that up in um, positions that I'm going to want it for my initial flight with my Skywalker 1800 fixed wing um, chances are I'm going to be doing other videos on multi rotors separately to that so um, so yeah but stay tuned obviously if you're interested in this if you've got a vector or you're thinking of getting a vector subscribe and um, I'll probably put a little playlist together with all of this.